From Creamer Media in Johannesburg, this is The Real Economy Report. The global CEO of technology group ABB, Ulrich Spiershofer, was in South Africa this month to officially open the company's latest manufacturing investment in the country, a state-of-the-art traction transformer factory in eastern Johannesburg. The facility will initially supply traction transformers to Bombardier Transportation, which was awarded a contract in 2014 to supply Transnet freight rail with 240 electric locomotives as part of the state-owned company's 50 billion rand acquisition of 1,064 electric and diesel locomotives. So today you will see an additional investment of ABB where we're expanding our offering on the rail side, where we're opening a traction transformer factory. An attraction transformer is quite simple. You have the overhead lines, you take power off, and this power needs to be converted to be used for a motor, for air conditioning, for different parts. That critical part of a train will be in the future produced here in South Africa for the entire Southern African continent. We will create more jobs with that. We will add another 100 jobs at least uh, to the already existing 1,300 jobs in this part and the 5,000 jobs that we have in Africa. We will create service jobs over time and we have the capacity to really support the local players here going forward. With that additional um, string uh, pearl in the string of pearls that we're investing in today, we have an unmatched capability to power up the rail industry in Africa. At the factory launch, Spearsoffer outlined the rationale for the investment, which was warmly welcomed by Department of Trade and Industry Director General Lionel October, who acknowledged that it was taking place despite some political turbulence in South Africa. We really value the partnership uh, with ABB over many years, the involvement in Bombardier and the involvement in our big um, rail program. So I want to also just reassure uh, the company and all um, investors that whilst in the country at the moment we're going through a little bit of political turbulence and it has been said we in a, for South Africa we're in a sort of an election year. But the fundamentals of this economy is extremely strong. We do have a strong industrial and technological capability in this um, uh, in South Africa but also we have a big market not only in South Africa but on the continent and we want to grow that market. Other news making headlines. A company needs to decide on the level of risk that it is willing to take regarding its projects and the healthcare of its employees and on-site staff. These risks greatly influence available opportunities for healthcare service providers such as International SOS. Simone Lietka tells us more. Welcome to International SOS, this is Lungi speaking, how may I assist you? Duty of care is a term commonly used when referring to the moral and legal obligations of an employer to their employees and their on-site staff. Healthcare service providers such as International SOS assist companies in mining and other sectors in providing these services. Duty of care encompasses quite a wide range of uh, implications and terms as you, as you correctly said. In sim simply put, it's uh, advising companies and uh, on how to reduce risk for their employees. So it's a risk reduction, an awareness and risk reduction strategy. And uh, uh, employers need to pay close attention to the environments that their employees are travelling into and travelling through because there are implications around their health and safety that will ultimately have a consequence for the employing organisation. The International SOS Healthcare Facility in Midrand, South Africa, one of several others worldwide, assists clients in becoming more aware of what is required from an employer when it comes to their healthcare services. It's about promoting that message of duty of care as we were talking about. So that promotion is really engaging in the conversation, uh, understanding the needs of the client, making sure that they appreciate the health risks of the space that they're operating in. Uh, and then through an assistance centre like this one, which is part of our global network of assistance centres, we can then dispense the information, we can receive the calls, the requests for assistance, and then we can advise the individuals accordingly and actually deliver the services from centres like this one. Mining companies, however, are not always fully aware of what risks there are, as medical services are not their core business. This needs to be attended to and can impact operations as well as the overall productivity and profitability of a project. Being aware of healthcare risks, you're quite right, that's not a mining company's game. They do mining. We do healthcare risk management, so it's up to us to have that helpful conversation uh, and ensure that we walk the journey together with them. 
what type of risks are we talking about? Well, quite frankly, uh, a poorly managed healthcare risk, health risk of an individual or a group of people working on a remote site or traveling has got an impact from a financial point of view, from a reputational point of view, from a business success or business continuity point of view. Um, and each of those areas will be affected potentially by a poorly managed healthcare situation. Let's keep it simple. Someone has a medical problem on a remote site. Could we have picked up that problem before the person went? Uh, does the fact that that healthcare problem get managed poorly in that space compromise the company's operations? Sure. Does it impact the individual? Yes. Does it impact company morale and the morale of the workforce in terms of how well they're being looked after? Does it affect the patient outcome? Sure, it does again. Does it cost someone a lot of money? Sure, it does again. So each opportunity that we have to walk and work with the organization to reduce that risk, at the end of the day, we should be seeing a health economic value and a health economic benefit to the company as well. That's Kriba Media's Real Economy Report. Join us again next week for more news and insights into South Africa's real economy.